Imagine a starlit night, you gaze up at the sky and your eyes meet our closest celestial neighbor, the moon. It's been the source of wonder and scientific study for generations. Now, it's about to become a new frontier for human exploration, serving as a catalyst for the next major mission of placing humans on Mars. This is the revolutionary era of NASA's Artemis missions, and at the center of it all is the next-generation lunar terrain vehicle. This vehicle promises to change the way we explore the moon, unraveling its mysteries in ways we've never seen before. In previous lunar missions, astronauts were limited by the distances they could traverse on foot. However, the development of this LTV signals a paradigm shift. With this vehicle, our lunar explorers can roam hundreds of miles across the moon's surface each year. To give you an idea of how monumental this leap is, consider this. The combined distance covered by all Apollo missions was only 22 miles. But the design is about more than just mobility. This machine is built to survive and operate in some of the harshest conditions imaginable. The lunar South Pole, where the Artemis missions will be focused, experiences cold and unique lighting conditions. Here, temperatures can plunge to minus 238 degrees Celsius and sunlight can be scarce. In these harsh conditions, the LTV is designed to thrive. NASA's approach to this project is unique too. Previously, these vehicles were owned entirely by NASA, but there are now plans to contract it as a service from industry. This strategy allows NASA to leverage the best of commercial innovation, ensuring that taxpayers get the best value for their money while the space agency achieves its human spaceflight and exploration goals. In the grand scheme of things, this strategy is a signal of a growing trend where government and commercial entities join forces to push the boundaries of human achievement. But what truly sets the LTV apart is its ability to function autonomously. This vehicle will support phases driven by astronauts and phases as an uncrewed mobile science exploration platform. This hybrid operation mode resembles the capabilities of NASA's renowned Mars rovers, Curiosity and Perseverance, but it will still have a component allowing semi-autonomous and manual navigation. Much like how Earth's self-driving cars operate, this feature enables the vehicle to independently traverse the lunar landscape. However, the moon's surface, littered with craters, rocks, and steep ridges, significantly ups the ante for autonomous navigation. Tires are another crucial element of the vehicle. In contrast to the Earth, the lunar environment lacks atmospheric pressure. Traditional air-filled tires would not be suitable. Instead, researchers might look towards the spring tire, an airless mesh tire filled with coiled wires, which was developed by NASA and Goodyear. The use of coiled wires allows the tire to maintain its shape even after significant strain. The tire can be deformed but springs back to its original shape, providing a much-needed element of resilience in the lunar landscape. An essential part of the blueprint for this marvel of engineering involves the types of materials needed. Each chosen material will need to withstand the punishing lunar environment, all while fulfilling its specific role within the vehicle. High-strength, lightweight alloys, possibly including aluminium or titanium, are likely contenders for the vehicle's chassis. Such alloys have been used in space vehicles before due to their high strength-to-weight ratio. This characteristic makes them ideal for the construction of a vehicle where every ounce matters. Moreover, these alloys have excellent resistance to the corrosion that can be caused by lunar dust. The lunar surface is bombarded with solar radiation due to the lack of an atmosphere. Hence, radiation shielding is a must. Lead, with its high atomic number, is a traditional choice for blocking radiation. However, its weight might make it impractical for space travel. Recent advancements have given rise to innovative radiation-blocking materials. One such example are hydrogenated boron nitride nanotubes which have a remarkable trait. They offer radiation protection while also being strong and light. The significance of this can't be overstated. It's akin to having a radiation-blocking fortress that weighs no more than a feather in comparison. The vehicle's exterior will need to be clad in insulation to protect from the severe temperature swings of the lunar environment. These temperature fluctuations can range from minus 173 degrees Celsius during lunar night to 127 degrees Celsius at lunar noon. Thermal insulation, vital for the vehicle's electronics and astronauts, may find its solution in the form of aerogels. 
These materials, often dubbed frozen smoke, have incredibly low density and are excellent thermal insulators. Incorporating such insulators will be critical to maintaining operational efficiency in the lunar environment's extreme temperature swings. The longevity and durability of the vehicle heavily rely on its resistance to lunar dust or regolith. Regolith is extremely abrasive, much like tiny shards of glass, and it sticks to everything. Scientists have been studying different coatings that could reduce dust adhesion, such as the electrodynamic dust shield, a technology that uses electric fields to remove dust. As we look further into the labyrinth of engineering marvels that enable the lunar terrain vehicle to perform in the hostile lunar environment, it's time to take a look at its power systems. Operating in an environment where sunlight can be absent for up to two weeks at a time, energy management becomes vital. First and foremost, the vehicle's power system has to be versatile and robust. For this, engineers are considering advanced power management systems, which include high-efficiency solar panels and advanced battery technology. These panels would take in as much sunlight as possible during the lunar day and store that energy in batteries to be used during the lunar night. Consider this. A lunar day-night cycle lasts about a month, meaning the vehicle could potentially have to operate in darkness for up to 14 Earth days at a time. Such extended periods without sunlight pose a significant challenge to maintaining power for the vehicle's systems and the onboard crew. Advanced battery technology, like lithium-ion batteries, are a strong contender due to their high energy density and long cycle life. They could store large amounts of energy from the solar panels during the lunar day to power the vehicle during the long lunar night. Next up, let's discuss the vehicle's communication and navigation systems. The lunar terrain vehicle will likely be equipped with a state-of-the-art communication system that ensures a reliable link with the lunar base and Earth. Whether the vehicle is manned or running autonomously, being able to send and receive data seamlessly will be key to its operations. When it comes to navigating the lunar surface, high-precision GPS-like systems won't be available. Hence, the vehicle might employ technologies like LiDAR and radar to understand its surroundings, along with advanced computer algorithms to make sense of that information and make safe navigation decisions. Indeed, the lunar terrain vehicle is shaping up to be not just a rover, but a mobile lunar base, equipped with the most advanced technologies humanity has to offer. As we prepare to embark on the Artemis missions, our footprints will once again grace the lunar surface, enabled by the extraordinary lunar terrain vehicle. So we would like to thank you for joining us on this captivating journey. And as always, stay curious, keep exploring, and let's dive into the mysteries of our universe together.